Let's bring in another man into the debate now, boxing writer, pundit, expert, Mike Marley. Welcome Guru. to the show. Hello, guys. How are you? Mike, first of all, mate, I've got to ask you, I read somewhere that your accreditation request has been kicked back by the Hatton Can. Tell me it's not true. I hate to say it, but it's true. The, uh, the First Amendment freedom of the press taking oh. a beating... Uh, and I, I really don't understand why. I, I mean, I, I'm picking Pacquiao to win. I think Pacquiao will win uh, going away. On the other hand, uh, sure. I've given nothing but respect to uh, Ricky Hatton, who's a tremendous athlete. So, Mike, are you saying, because uh, I've known you a long while, and you can upset people, Mike, and I've been there when you've upset people, and you're a lovely fellow, I love you like a lost brother, but are you telling me they banned you because you picked against them? Well, I, there's, I can't, there's, there's no other discernible reason. I mean, uh, I've written uh, nothing personal about uh, about Hatton and his family or anybody with him. You know, I, I, had, a, I, I had a little fun. Uh, oh, there we go. Uh, I had a little fun talking about uh, Lee Beard, who uh, yep. this uh, the little, little known. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, he... he He's come off a little bit, uh, and I've never met the man. I have nothing against him, but he kind of came off as uh, he was like a, he was Emmanuel Stewart or Angelo Dundee, yeah. and uh, I just questioned who he'd ever trained before he carried uh, he Bucket. carried uh, Mr. Hatton's gym bag. But but uh, anyway, you know, at Buncey, I'm like you. I'm like Billy Graham. I'm not going to cry over a spilt cerveza. Yeah. I'm so going to uh, go to the scene. I'm going to catch it on the screen. But I was at ringside to see Fraji. Talk to me about Fraji, that one. I, I'll tell you, you know, this kid is tremendous. He, you know, he talks about the warrior within. Afterwards, uh, you know, you could... T I mean, he's got such a rapport with his trainer, Rob McCracken, yeah, and, and they're, they're total, totally in sync. Fraji, you know, I had some fun with Fraji, and I wasn't banned from his fight, and I'm glad I wasn't because it was a crackerjack fight. Mm. Uh, it's a shame that it wasn't live on TV in the U.K., it's and uh, I hope that won't, won't happen. But, you know, the best thing about him, Buncey, Fraji talked big. He talked big. He said, I will smoke Jermaine T Taylor's boots. boots. And... And, and when I left uh, Foxwoods, uh, it looked to me like Taylor's boots were still burning. <laughs> Mike, they were. So, Mike, listen, are you going to try and appeal against this hat and band, or have you paid your money, you're going to sit at home, uh, you know, somewhere, in, somewhere glorious in New York, in your trendy loft apartment and watch the fight? What are you going to do, Mike? Well, I'm actually at my tiny uh, oceanfront estate on Cape Cod. What can uh, you do? The Kennedy, what can you do? Their, their, their property's a little bit bigger than mine. But uh, we are nearby. But I, I'm going to do, you know, as Don King would say, if you can't be on the scene, catch it on the screen. Uh, and uh, uh, Bob Arum uh, called me. I, I don't want to make a, you know, look, whatever uh, uh, somebody's nose is out of joint in the hat, hat and camp. Uh, uh, you know, I would say that I've been thrown out of better places than the MGM Grand, but that wouldn't be true. I have been thrown out of worse. So. Yeah. Uh, whatever it is, look, uh, a, a press credential, uh, I've only been covering fights since Ali Liston 2, the rematch in Lewiston, Maine. You, uh, you junior, you. Yeah, yeah. Low, low those 45 years ago. But, but, but a press credential is a privilege, not a right. Uh, uh, they and Golden Boy have blocked me. I, I may have written some critical things. Uh, oh, I did write that, to me, Oscar De La Hoya was the president of boxing uh, in his yeah. heyday, but uh, okay. you, you, uh, it, it is what it is. Mike, Mike, listen, go on. Before we let Mike go, I've got an email here from Sean Beattie, who's desperate to ask you one question. He said, if anyone knows the answer, Mike will. He says, Mike, tell us what is happening with Kessler. When will we see him fight again this year? That's from Sean, one of our viewers. Well, I can tell you that Mikko, I spoke to him last week. He's in training. Uh, he's got a mandatory bout against Gusimil Perdomo. Unfortunately, it's a mandatory. I'm not going to tell you it's a sensational fight, but he'll have to fulfill the mandatory uh, uh, late summer. Yeah. And uh, Kess Kessler, Kessler will take on anybody. I, I, I mean, I, I, I will say this. I'll tell you one thing that Fraji, he packs a lunch. He's a working man style fighter, and he's not going to be an easy fight for Mikkel Kessler or anybody else uh, uh, tremendous, tremendous props and great respect for Carl Frotch. He talked the talk, and he, and walked, then he the walked, walked the walk. He came to America, 
And I'll tell you, he made, he made a lot of people take notice. And he left your main tailor's boot smoking. Mike Marley, I won't see you tomorrow or tonight in Las Vegas, but I'll speak to you soon. Thanks for joining us on well, the show, I'll Mike. Tell you, one, last, one last thing, guys. On, you know, everyone talks about the size difference. With the, I like Pacquiao with, to stop Ricky in 10 rounds. Don't forget, Floyd Mayweather started out at 130 pounds. So yeah, we're not I think that. all this talk mm. about the size difference is overrated. Mabuha Kamani, as we say in the Philippines. Yeah, listen, listen, in that... all respect to Ricky, it'll be a crackerjack fight. And as we say in South London, I'll speak to you later on, son. Thanks very much indeed, Cheers, Mike. Guys. See you, kid. Cheers. Let me, let me tell you something about Mike Marley, okay? Mm. I'm going to battle his corner out there. I'm going to fight his corner. I've known Mike a long time. I've worked with him at ringside 20 years out of various fights. And he's a battler. If something happened, if he got a really bad seat, he'd go straight into Don King, he'd go straight into Bob Arum, he'd go straight into anybody to try and upgrade your seat to make sure that the top people are in the best seats. He is old school. And if he, he didn't criticise Lee Beard. I saw the piece. Who he, what he said was, who's Lee Beard? And that's a valid comment. Nothing against Lee Beard. It doesn't mean that we don't respect Lee Beard, who's done a lot of work with Matthew Han, who's done a lot of work with Ricky. He's doing all the Southport pads with Ricky. It just means we want to know who he is. He's been on the scene 18 months. People are entitled to know who they are. And Mike's a little bit, you know, he's a bit... You know, he gives it a bit of top spin. He's a bit lively. He's a bit cheeky. He sounds like somebody else I know, Bunty. Easy fellow. He's a lawyer, by the way. So that's why you always know he works inside what's, uh, what's legally right and what's legally wrong. And he, keep that uh, in mind. It's all over mind. to you, son. I tell you, I'm going to throw it back to you because oh, course, Mike yeah. is picking Manny Pacquiao. Mm -hmm. Billy, understandably, is Thank going you. for Ricky. Uh, this fight's so big, you just don't really need to sell it. No, you don't really. It's one of those fights. I mean, it's, to be honest with you, the way I look at it, you know, it's as big as it gets. I mean, this is just about as big as it gets. I mean, think Tyson and Lewis. That was massive. Bigger than a normal heavyweight fight involving Tyson. And let's get it right, Andy. They were enormous. Because what it was about that night, it was about history. It was about things coming together. And in many ways, that's how I see this fight. It's about Ricky finally getting somewhere, Pacquiao also being on a massive pedestal. Bruno and Tyson, the atmosphere was relentless, passion and power, and just a great release from Tyson. You saw this. He's about eight foot in front of me when he went down. It was fear and proper loathing in Las Vegas, a roller coaster on both sides of the ropes. The press week was amazing. The fallout was stunning. And then little Hamid and Barrera, that was big, unbeaten Naz against the best fighter in the world at that moment. Now much has been written, but sadly much has been forgotten about that fight. I seem to be on a single-handed crusade to try and put matters right. Naz didn't get a, a hiding that night. He lost, but he didn't prepare. It's a, it's a miracle he wasn't knocked out in two rounds. And how about this, Sin? You don't have to go to Vegas always for a big fight. What about Rogi against Skelton? Drama and heavyweight. Drama at its absolute best. What a fight. It truly doesn't get any bigger than that big one. However, this weekend, I think, Andy, is going to be absolutely sensational. They've done 20,000 tickets in the closed circuit, which I think are about $20. The venue sold out for about 16,000. By the way, last year, De La Hoya Pacquiao, there were 2,500 empty seats sold on the day. So this is a proper seller. I think there'll be 25,000 Brits there. It's done in America, nearly a million on pay-per-view. So they're going to be splitting an awful lot of pound notes, my friend. And there must be one or two people back home because we're getting the emails flooding in. Uh, I'm going to just surmise what we've got from a few of them. Go on, son. We've got a bucket load of emails saying, is this fight lessened because there's no real title on the line? We've got a bucket load more saying that just makes the governing bodies look bad. Well, Where do you stand on that? Well, the IBO are in the mix, and some people recognise the IBO. I recognise the IBO, I recognise all of them, and the IBO is one of the new organisations. It's a lovely organisation run by some fine people. What's on the line also is this sort of fictitious pound-for-pound pound thing. I'm never sure about the pound-for-pound pound thing. I'm even less sure about the Ring magazine belt. Oscar De La Hoya owns the Ring magazine belt, Ring magazine, so that's, that's a little bit tricky. Now, this, this, this could be a sign of the times, but I say that every year. I've been saying it for 10 years. Oh, this fight will be the sign of the times. This is the fight when the fighters and the promoters say, up yours to the sanctioning bodies. They haven't really said up yours to Steve, the sanctioning Steve, fingers bodies. down. We apologise if anyone was offended. By no, 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 it was part, I wasn't doing it personally. I was, hey, hey, listen, <laughs> there's a group of people in They're Venezuela, a group of people in Puerto Rico, a group of people in Mexico City who run boxing. You're allowed to do it to them. Any children watching, bunking off school, you shouldn't be bunking off school anyway. And if you saw me stick my two fingers up, get back to school. Carol and Andy. No, listen, just to, You're not lost for words, are you, kid? Never. Well, ever. Most, most weeks. Um, but Can just, I just ask you, is that a pink fleck in that jacket? Or is it purple? What's that, yeah, what's that line? I think it's violet. 
Anyway, well, don't, let's not get into the rainbow. Just bring in Junior Witter because obviously, ah. all of a sudden, because these belts are now not being fought by the top guys, Junior Witter getting a chance to sneak in could get his belt back because Bradley has to vacate. Yeah, Bradley's going to. Bradley's been. No, I think he's. Well, it's a tricky old thing. Basically, he had a set amount of time um, to, to, to after he beat uh, Kendall Holt to decide whether he was going to give up the belts he won on that night. Duh, why would he do that? So that becomes the WBC belt. So they'll fight for this thing called the ordinary belt. Now you know, don't even get me started on that, Andy. We've got to go off air at one because I've got to catch a flight at four o'clock. This ordinary stuff. I think Junior Witter will get a title shot and he deserves it. He was a good champion. Having waited all those years, he was a good champion. Three or four fights in about 18 months. Lost the, lost the title about a year ago. He deserves another crack at that belt. He deserves a running. And who knows, down the line, it might be him against Khan if Khan can beat Katelnik, outside chance. Or maybe him against Ricky if Ricky lost to Pac-Man. There's all sorts of variations. All of them spell one thing, pound notes. And that's what we're in the business for. There you go. So says the Gospel of Bunce.